Well, everybody, Professor Barth here, Associate Professor of History at Arizona State University. Go Sun Devils. Inflation numbers not looking good today, 8.2% year over year, but core prices are really uh, the, the problem. Four decade high since, it hasn't been this high since August of 1982 when it comes to core inflation. I'm going to uh, detail the inflation numbers in, in a video very shortly. Every month I give inflation reports called Inflation Nation. I'll do that in the next video. By the way, I apologize for the poor quality audio I'm recording at home today. But I just want to set the record straight. The Fed is 100% responsible for this inflationary crisis. And it is a crisis because it, it, inflation is very hard to stop once it gets going. And, and inflation just decimates the working class. Inflation decimates the middle class. The rich are okay, they'll do all right. But you, the working class, the middle class, it, it, inflation is a, uh, it, it can, can really um, impact your life in a negative way. Wages just don't keep up with it. The prices outpace your wage or your salary. And the Federal Reserve is the culprit. 100%, there's no denying it. Why? Well, it really all, they, they caused it for one. They started the whole thing. They, they set the fire through quantitative easing. All that QE, and by the way, QE is just a fancy word for creating money out of thin air, creating new currency, not backed by anything, but just, just invented up. And when COVID broke out, here's a, here's a, uh, a chart of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. And the Federal Reserve purchases assets, treasuries, mortgage-backed securities, and they purchase those assets with new, newly created dollars, again, invented out of thin air, not backed by anything. And so when you see this huge increase in the Fed's balance sheet, think inflation, okay? That's newly created dollars to purchase those assets. Look at what happened in spring of 2020, just the Fed's balance sheet was just over $4 trillion. By early summer, it sat at, at more than $7 trillion. And then after early summer 2020, through the beginning of 2022, the Fed's balance sheet continued to grow steadily $120 billion a month. Every month, $120 billion, again, created out of nothing, created out of thin air, added to the Fed's balance sheet to purchase securities so that by the beginning of this year, 2022, the Fed's balance sheet was almost $9 trillion. Okay, now to give you some perspective of how radical this policy was, and it was radical, Again, there's no question who's responsible for the inflation. Look at the Fed's balance sheet. This graph is so telling. From 2015 through 2022. And here you have actually a slow decline beginning in 2018. If you remember in 2018, 2019, the Fed raised interest rates just a little bit. And then look at that spike. Wow. Wow. And then even after that immense enormous injection of QE. Even after that, that steady increase, $120 billion a month. Mm. And then we wonder, oh, why do we have inflation? Well, gee, why don't you take a look at it? Um, here's even zoomed out even more. Now, it, it, after, in the 2008 financial crisis, Ben Bernanke injected some QE. So you have a spike there, but man, that spike looks awfully small compared to that one. Ben Bernanke looks like a sound money guy compared to Jerome Powell. And so this was radical and, and it had an impact on the money supply. Here's M2, the most common measure of the money supply from 2012 to 2022. Again, there's where QE really picked up. Look at that spike in the money supply between spring of 2020 to the current day. The M2, the money supply has increased by more than 40%. More than 40% more dollars in the system, in the economy, than there were on the eve of the pandemic. 
That is incredible. Of course you're going to have inflation. So the Federal Reserve, we're establishing why the Fed is the culprit. Number one, they started it. Number two, even after it became abundantly clear to where you could not deny it, that inflation was a problem, and I'm talking in 2021, summer to fall of 2021, it was undoubtable, okay? Some of us were talking about it before then, but by, by the second half of 2021, you couldn't deny it. Even then, the Federal Reserve was in denial, called it transitory, blamed it on other factors, and continued QE. Like, even when it was obvious, inflation's here, inflation's a problem, the Fed continued its program of quantitative easing. Finally, and this was $120 billion a month, injected every single month. Currency jumped up out of thin air. Finally, in November, 11 months ago of 2021, the Fed announced a, a program of tapering. <laughs> and, and tapering didn't stop QE. It just reduced how much QE they were doing. So the Fed was doing $120 billion a month. And so the in November, the Fed, the FOMC decided, oh, well, we'll, we'll reduce that amount by $15 billion every month and, and we'll do it progressively. And then we'll sort of slow QE down. And then eventually, several months from now, we'll get rid of it. This was their statement. Look at the statement from November 2021. And I've been making these inflation videos for over a year now. So you know, this was not, we knew this was a problem, but here's the FOMC in November of 2021, just 11 months ago. Inflation is elevated, largely reflecting factors that are expected to be transitory. Transitory, so they were still using that word in November 2021, and they're blaming it on everything else. Supply and demand imbalances related to the pandemic and the reopening of the economy have contributed to sizable price increases. So it was, it's not their fault. Never mind all of this, okay? Never mind this. Never mind that. It's it's you know, it's just transitory. It's just various supply chain issues. That was the Fed's official position in late late in 2021, and they're like, we're going to continue QE. We'll just taper a little bit. We'll reduce it a little bit. And eventually, we'll phase it out gradually. Jerome Powell said this in a statement in November 2021. It's so important to keep public officials accountable and to remind, remind the people what they said in the past. This is Powell in November 2021. Keep in mind the CPI, the latest CPI numbers in November 2021, year over year was 5.4%. 5.4%, and that's not core. That's the total CPI was 5.4%. Powell said this, our baseline expectation is that supply chain bottlenecks and shortages will persist well into next year and elevated inflation as well. So he was sort of setting expectations and eh, inflation is going to be here for a while. Nevertheless, he said, quote, inflation will decline from today's elevated levels. Inflation was 5.4 percent. It's going to decline from today's elevated levels. Look where we are now. We've had month after month of inflation exceeding 8 percent. We have core inflation at a more than 40 year high. And here's Powell late in 2021 saying inflation will decline from today's elevated levels. And you know anyone who studied the fundamentals knew that, that inflation was not transitory, knew that this was a problem rela related to bad monetary policy. In November, that, that same month, in response, actually, to these statements, I made a video called Taper. This was a thumbnail. Taper still means more paper, saying, look, the, the Fed needs to stop QE right now. Tapering is not stopping QE. It's just reducing QE. But you've got to cut out the QE now. Inflation's here. What are you doing? But they continued QE, albeit on a reduced level, into 2022. In February, I made a video calling out the madness, the insanity of not ending QE now. Like what is going on? Why is the Fed still injecting QE into the economy? It was utter madness. And it didn't take, it doesn't take rocket science to understand it, okay? About my, my, you know, 
I took economics, a basic economics class in high school. You could figure it out in that class, which almost makes you wonder, is this by design? I would like not to think so, but it's hard not to wonder is this by design that that is there some something going on here it's weird but that they continued the qe into into early 2022 and so now the fed has to slam on the brakes could have tapped on the brakes although the qe was so large tapping on the brakes probably wouldn't have been enough but now they really got just slam on those brakes and it's going to result in a major downturn it's going to result in a major downturn, and it's all because of the Federal Reserve's stupidity, okay? It, it, and that's what it is. It was stupid policy. If And that's at best, if, if not nefarious policy. I don't want to think like that necessarily, I, but look, given human nature, there's no telling, but, but bare minimum, it was stupid policy. And this is a habit of the Federal Reserve. Uh, if you In my History of Money class, you look at the, the history of the Federal Reserve over the last century, and it's one error after another. Great Depression caused by the, the boom created by the Federal Reserve in the 1920s. Then you've got, you got the, the inflation of the 1960s into the 1970s. Got off the gold standard, all the inflation in the 1970s. You have the dot-com bubble. Then you've got the 2008 financial crisis. And now here we are. It's just one thing after another the Federal Reserve has failed the American people. This is why ultimately it's got to go. I don't know how you do that exactly. That's a huge challenge. But ultimately, it's, it's, it's founded on a bad philosophy. It's founded on a bad um, system of organizing a, a, uh, your, 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 the, the money of it, the economy. Now, what's the Federal Reserve going to do? They're going to have to slam on the brakes. And in the minutes that the FOMC released on September um uh, or from their September meeting, they released it two days ago, or what? Maybe it might have been yesterday. And in these minutes, they make it clear they're going to raise rates. So we're bare minimum. The next Fed meeting is in early November, so in a few weeks, bare minimum, they're going to raise rates to uh, or by seventy-five basis points. So we'll probably see an upper limit of four percent. Honestly, I think they need to go more than that. I think we need to be talking right now very seriously about 100 basis points. I would even start talking about 150 basis points. Is that going to lead to a major economic downturn? Yes, but at some point, it's got to, something's got to give. And, and, and if you want to bring inflation down, then you've got to, because it's it's wrecking havoc for for a lot of families. I mean, this is, this is um, uh, inflation has... Again, I use the word decimate, and it does decimate. It, it a lot of families are living paycheck to paycheck. We've got to, we, you've got to put a stop to this. It's gonna, but it's gonna cause short term pain to do it. We've got it. You've got, you've got to do it. This plan, footsing around, hee hawing around. No, I, I would go all in and do 150 basis point. But again, that that also underscores the problem of the philosophy of the Federal Reserve. The fact that we have this central board <laughs> that is deciding the interest rates. It's actually very socialist. Um, in in a truly uh, uh, in a truly market economy, the market would decide what the interest rate is and, and the supply of money and all the rest. Instead, we have this central board of exper experts who are all out of the financial industry. That's another problem with the Federal Reserve. They all come out of big finance. They serve the interests of big finance. Instead, you have the central board of so-called experts from from the big banks, from the financial industry, deciding, like they're you know, like they're lords up on high, deciding what the what the proper interest rate is, assuming that they have perfect knowledge, uh, assuming assuming that they have the knowledge to even make that decision. F. A. Hayek, if you've read Hayek, blows that that uh, blows that whole theory apart. And so the whole the whole Federal Reserve system is founded on a fallacy, and we've really got to talk about about uh, about cha up upending the entire system. But the pro the question is, how do you do that without spark without causing anarchy and chaos? Because currencies are really important. Obviously, is a <laughs> extremely central part of the economy. If you can't just pull the rug out suddenly 
and and just hope and pray that ever, that that society doesn't collapse into 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 uh, unrest and rioting and chaos and all the rest. You've got to you've got to transition to another system. That I've struggled so much with with how do we deal with the Fed? But there's no question the Fed was a mistake from the beginning. And one thing after another, they're messing up, and this is their fault. Okay, so the Fed, the federal government is also responsible. Both parties, by the way, I vote Republican, but I mean Republican parties are big spenders too, just as much as the Democrats, frankly. And but the federal government spending money like a drunken sailor, but where do they get that money? Where do they get that liquor? They get it from the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve is responsible. Make no mistake about it. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna make another video very shortly. Um, analyzing the the exact stats here and giving my take on on the numbers. So check that out. Inflation Nation October update will be out soon. But I just want I had a I had to vent here and and uh, lay it all out. So um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hey, share this video. People need it. People need to hear this. So share this video. Um, so long. God bless. Peace.